Welcome to today's video, where I'm going to be showing you exactly step by step how to set up the Celestron StarSense Explorer 114LT. So if you have recently purchased this Newtonian reflector, maybe you've had it some time and you just want to kind of refresh your memory, then this video is for you. We're going to be getting this telescope ready to go. I'm literally going to be getting all of the pieces out of the box and I'm going to be showing you exactly where they all go. And I'm also going to be giving you some additional tips and suggestions along the way so you can get the most out of this telescope. And if you're new to the channel, I would recommend that you hit the subscribe and bell button because I will be releasing lots of future videos on this particular telescope, uh, what you can see with it, recommendations, suggestions, etc. So I want to help make sure that you maximize your enjoyment from it. So do be sure to subscribe. With that said, let's build this telescope. First thing that I'd recommend that you do is get out the three different boxes that come included in the large box and just check that you have absolutely everything that you should have. So in the one of the smaller boxes, you should have eight pieces. You should have a finder scope, you should have a lens cloth, you should have a star sense dock, you should have a tool, you should have a 10 millimeter eyepiece, a 25 millimeter eyepiece, a two times Barlow lens, and also a locking knob. Then you should have the optical tube as well, as you can see here, if you didn't have this piece, then you are in big trouble. And also a locking knob. I actually got two in here. I'm not sure if we're gonna be using both of those, but just be mindful that you do get, you should get two. And then in this box, you will have your tripod and mount, which you can see is already together. And then you should have your accessory tray. So there's 12 pieces in total. Now a little quick tip, be sure to keep these boxes and do remember um, to put them all back in each, each box because if you do want to store this telescope away or perhaps in the future if you do want to sell your telescope and invest in a future model then it's really really easy to do so. I actually like to keep some perhaps I don't think I've got anything there we've got the uh, bag as well make sure you've got the bag but um, I also like to keep all this additional packaging as well just to keep it really well protected and also if you're selling it it's um, you know if you, you if you were to receive a telescope that had that kind of extra packaging it will be well received. First thing that we need to do is to stand up the tripod and mount, fully extend the legs, make sure they're all out equally, and then also make sure that the center leg brace is pushed down. Next, we need to extend the center portion of each leg down about six to 12 inches. So these are the center portions. You'll notice that they are locked in at the moment so they're not coming down. We basically need to unscrew this locking knob here. So I'm going clockwise. And once you get, you know, once you release it enough, it'll extend the whole way. Now we can adjust this depending on our height, but you essentially want to do that for each leg and then lock it in place. Now we do need to make sure that each of the three legs is exactly the same because we need to support our telescope and we need to ensure that we are stable as well. So if you do it like that, I don't know if you saw that, I released the knob there, it kind of just fell through. Um, and yeah, we need to do that for each and every leg. So I'll be nice and quick, hopefully. So that's two. Now, when you do this, you might have noticed that I might have lost that first step where we did the extension. So just be mindful of that. Uh, we should be nearly there. The good thing is with the weight of these, if you, when you unscrew, if you hold up like this, it does typically tend to fall through. It didn't that time actually but it did on the second one. And then we just screw that back in place. I've put them all the way to the bottom just because then we know for sure that we are all uh, equal. So that's that. Now extend the legs again and you should find that we are now in place for the next step. The next thing we need to do is screw our accessory tray into the tripod. There's a little hole in the center that enables us to do so. Now there is a screw on the bottom of the accessory tray and you basically obviously just need to uh, line that up. Be careful, you don't want to scratch uh, your tripod and you are essentially just screwing it in place. You can apply a little bit of pressure. Um, it does tend to screw in quite a while. I was quite surprised the first time I did this at how far it goes in. But uh, yeah, just make sure it's nice and secure and then also make sure that um, there are, as you can see here, gaps. You don't want, as an example, you don't want any overlapping there because you can't put your, your components in uh, if you are storing them in the accessory tray. So make sure they are you know, fully open and then you can start to store your items in the accessory tray. Now ready to add the obstacle tube 
to the mount. Now, what we need to do here is we need to slide the altitude rod into the rod guide on the mount and then lower the altitude hubs on the telescope, which are those, the altitude hubs, uh, into the cradles on the top of each yoke arm. So here are those cradles, I'll just quickly show you. So here are the cradles in the yoke arm. So to do, that, to do this, the best way to do it is place your tripod and mount uh, facing in say this direction and you need to look for this first and foremost, okay? So this little kind of hold area. Position your optical tube like this so that, so that uh, this section is facing upward, okay? This is where our mobile phone will go later if we're using the StarSense technology. Now, put the um, altitude rod through here and kind of pivot so that these fit in. So hopefully you saw that. Both sides, we are kind of, we slotted in on both sides. So now we are very, do not let go at this point because this is very treacherous. At this point, we need to start using the locking knobs. So the smallest one, which came in the box of eight, hopefully I'm pointing in the right direction here, smaller one, that goes in here. And we just need to screw clockwise. And once you get that in, you do get, a, you are afforded a little bit of stability with the others. So you could kind of temporarily let go like as I did there, but I still wouldn't recommend it. And then make sure we're all aligned here. And then the larger locking knobs we need to screw in. So you might need to apply a little bit of pressure to the optical tube, but make sure you go in straight. So I think I actually went in a little bit off there. So we need to make sure we're nice and straight. Just make sure you want to make sure that your optical tube is really in there properly. You don't obviously want any of this. There you go. You want to make sure, yeah, you don't want to screw in the wrong places. You'll damage, you'll damage your components. And not only that, you want to be able to trust that your telescope is going to be safe. So that's one side. Now we just need to do the second side. And the second one is always much easier because you're usually aligned. And you may need to, as I say, put a little bit of weight on either the back or the front just to make sure that these screws are in kind of the right position. There we go. And that was that step. So now we are going to be adding our finder scope. So I've taken it out of its packaging. Again, that's one of the components in that box there where you get eight pieces. And what you need to do is you need to locate, hopefully you can see this, those two little screw pieces. And don't lose these, you need these. These are very important, okay? Because they're gonna keep the finer scope on. So remove these first and foremost. So I'm screwing anti-clockwise. Be careful, if you're doing this outside, be careful not to drop them. I've done that plenty of times, it's very stressful. And you'll be surprised at how far they screw on. I'm sure there's a quicker way of doing this. If you know, please drop down a comment below because be, I'd appreciate that. It's going to take me forever. Now, they're off. We need those to take to screw on the finer scope and keep it in position. But this is the direction of the finer scope. So if we have a little look, we want it to be facing um, this way. So I'll show you this. I'll put it on and then I'll just explain the right, the right direction. So put the um, finer scope. So there's two holes in the bottom of the finder scope, as you can see here, hopefully. Place that onto the optical tube. Make sure it's nice and flush. And screw them on. Sorry, I had one of those in my mouth as I was, which I wouldn't advise, do not do that, because you could swallow these if you get it wrong. And then just screw these on, make sure it's all nice and flush. Sorry, I don't think you could see that one. Just screwing the other one in. Now there is a bit of plastic in here, I'll talk you through that in the next step, okay? Don't worry about that. It might not apply if you're setting this up for a, a subsequent time, but this is the direction we should have it. So as you can see here, now the way I remembered it was, oh, I'll kick the box. This little, can you see there's a little uh, screw bit at the back? That should be facing 
the back of the scope. So if I just go this direction, hopefully you can see which way I've put it on. Now it's time to add the eyepiece. So to do that, you'll see here there are a couple of screws that we just need to loosen. Uh, and we also need to remove the dust cap. Um, so when we do that, so let me take that off first and foremost. So just use my finger to do that. And you'll then see that these screws, you'll see they're kind of um, in, you know, that that's these are gonna allow us to lock the eyepiece in place. So we need to screw these. So I'm screwing these, hopefully you can see that. Get it nice and close. So there, let's open that up. You wanna keep them in there though, don't take them fully out. And then it is recommended to use the 25 millimeter eyepiece first and foremost, because that will allow us um, essentially to find objects into the, in the sky uh, much easier. And then you can always move to the higher power eyepiece, the 10 millimeter later. So to do this, here's a 25. I've taken all of the different caps off. And then we obviously want this bit to be facing us. So you simply pop it in place. If it doesn't go, you may need to, you know, play around with these screws a little bit. And then you, all you need to do at this point is screw these back in place and that will lock the eyepiece into position. Now, if you want to use your Barlow lens, which it does say it on the side, but looks like this, then all you need to do is, well, you need to take out the eyepiece first and foremost. So you actually would have done this in a previous step and you would have just put, you just put that in. So put that in like this, and then you would, unscrew that because that's the tightening for the eyepiece to go into that. So at this point you need to secure the Barlow lens, screw that in as you would have done with the eyepieces, then you put your eyepiece into the Barlow lens. Now why would you do this? What's the purpose of the Barlow lens? Well in a nutshell it basically it will double your magnification of whatever eyepiece you are using. So it can be really really useful depending on what you want to observe. It's time to install the StarSense smartphone dock. So all you need to do at this point, and this is the easiest way to do it, is this big bit here, face that towards the eyepiece, okay? And then there's a couple of screws on the top, which again, keep this in place. So screw these outward. You don't wanna remove them the whole way. You just want to make sure that this area becomes loose. And then you basically just slide it into place. If I show you, you just slide that down into place. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then again, screw these. So I'm now going clockwise because this needs to support our phone. So make sure it is nice and secure. Go the whole way on both of those. And that will secure the dock and we can now use our phone. So here's the final step. All we need to do now is remove the lens cap from the front of the telescope. And then, so I'll just do that now. Obviously store that somewhere safe. You don't want to lose that. And then all you need to do, I actually like to put that on the accessory tray, little tip there. Then all you need to do to use your telescope, obviously I'm inside, this is not gonna work. So you do this outside. All you need to do is look through the eyepiece and then you can also focus your image by adjusting these two here. That's how to set up the Celestron StarSense Explorer 114 LT. When it comes to disassembly, it is essentially everything in reverse, but I do strongly recommend that you kind of take your time and be mindful of everything. You don't want to lose any of your little uh, screws here, you know, your, your locking knobs. Just be really mindful of taking everything, uh, deconstructing everything, and also be sure to kind of put it back in its original packaging. And I would recommend, as I said at the start of the video, putting it into your original boxes so you know where everything is. Now, if you like this video, please let me know. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. I'll get back to you. Uh, and with that said, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of videos coming on using this telescope, what you can expect from it, some of the best things that I've been able to observe. So as I say, yeah, you want to make sure that you watch those videos. But with all that said, I hope this was useful and I hope you have an excellent day.